Hello, begonia lovers. Today I am bringing you my begonia collection. <laughs> begonia lovers new and old i am marina the millennial planter hopefully your favorite millennial planter at least one of them really hope you choose to subscribe to this channel if you're not and just come along with me as we talk about the good and the bad of all things houseplant begonias let's be honest they are not everyone's cup of tea uh they weren't my cup of tea for a very long time and then i just kind of fell down that rabbit hole and hasn't looked up since. I am bringing you my begonia collection. It is not big by any means, uh, but you know, I just, I wanted to spotlight them a little bit because I don't talk about my begonias often. And they are one of my top three favorite genuses. I love the polka dots. I love the leaves. I just, I love them all. They're so beautiful and let's just get on into it. So first, before anything, I do want to preface this and say I mainly collect cane begonias. I struggled so long with rhizomaceous begonias and I kind of kicked them to the curb after I killed an autumn embers begonia and honestly, I still want to cry about that. So through that whole journey, I just started collecting cane begonias because they are way easier than the other rhizomaceous begonias or the rex begonias, the ones that you see at Home Depot and Lowe's. In my experience, the cane begonias are just way easier and definitely they just got me into the world of begonias. Let's take a shot every time I say begonia. So when it comes to these beautiful cane begonias, which when I say cane, it's literally just the begonias that grow upright, kind of in a big bushy effect. And they get really, really tall and they really get bushy. Uh, but yeah, this is what I mean. They just, they literally grow in a cane-like shape. And uh, they do kind of like higher humidity. The humidity in my house is generally like 50%. It doesn't go below 40%. And I do wait for my begonias to completely dry out before I water them. I would say, looking at this pot, I would wait for them to get about 80% dry because if you wait too long, that's when they start losing leaves and they get a little fussy. So yeah, I, I but I wait for them to dry out a pretty good significant amount. And as far as my setup goes, this is where I keep a majority of my begonias, my cane ones. And as you can see, it doesn't get much light, but I do have a pretty bright grow light up there. And then there's another grow light here on the side. So they get a lot of supplemental lighting and I have increased the light with um, over the past couple months. So I'm really hoping to just get bigger leaves from them over the next, hopefully come the next growing season, but I will keep you all updated on that. But this is how they are. They can handle pretty low light, but if you want to get bigger leaves from the begonias, uh, definitely give them a little bit brighter light. First here we have the begonia crackling rosy, and I know she doesn't look like much, but she's on the up and up. Some of my begonias weren't getting enough light, and this is one of them. So I moved her to a higher light area and this top leaf here is looking a lot better. So hopefully I can get those really big, beautiful, crackling rosy leaves come 2021, but she's still doing really well. She even has this little one at the bottom that's growing. So I'm happy with her. The next begonia is probably one of my top favorites and it is begonia pink minx. I purchased this one early earlier this year, actually, last winter uh, from Steve's Leaves. And as you can see, she's just a real beauty. Her leaf shapes are unlike most begonias, and that's what I love about her so much. She really just, just has tree, tree leaves. I don't, they just remind me of leaves that grow on trees, and that's why I love her so much. And the mix of the maroons and the pinks and the grays in her just, it's just won my heart over and I just stare at this begonia all the time. It took a while for her to acclimate to my house, 
but thankfully now that she's nice and acclimated she is just shooting out so much new growth finally i even got this little guy here growing and that one took forever to grow and now that it's growing i'm just so proud <laughs> uh yeah just truly a stunner next we have the ever classic uh begonia whitey eye and this one as you could see the beautiful red backs there so this is kind of what i mean about a begonia that's not getting enough light um <laughs> you could kind of see the journey here so the lower leaves are the leaves that came with the plant so they're pretty much getting ideal conditions then it goes through a kind of like a period where the leaves were very small and not red at all and now that i've introduced more light you could see the newer leaves are getting those red backs again which i was kind of bummed um, when it wasn't getting that red in it. So I knew right away that it was a light issue and now it's fixing itself. So hopefully I can get some bigger leaves and I can stop dealing with these little baby ones. But this plant, once again, is just growing like crazy. I did cut it back here to propagate and I have that propagating right now just to make the plant fuller. But yeah, it's just, it's a beauty. This was actually one of my first Cane begonias, and I was lucky enough to get it at Home Depot with their whole like trending tropicals um, selection. So they still have this begonia and others in the trending tropicals collection. So definitely go check out your local Home Depot and Lowe's because I know Lowe's has them too. Or is it the other way around? Either way, go check out your local big box stores. You might be able to find some cool begonias. Next, we have the Begonia Matchmaker, which is very similar to the whitey eye that I just showed you, but it doesn't have the red back. So it is just a pure green, sparkly, silver begonia. I mean, how do people not like begonias? How do you not like these adorable polka dots? And they're silver and they're shiny. It's just, it's it's a dream come true, honestly. Next, we have a begonia that doesn't have an identification. So if you know, let me know. But I like to call this <laughs> the bat wing begonia. I don't know. Let's just talk about this plant for a second. So first of all, the leaf shape is absolutely adorable. It's not like a regular begonia shape. The backs are red, as you can see there. And what I've noticed lately, and I don't think this is a light thing because it is getting lower light now than it is than it was previously, but I think this is maybe a maturity thing. But some of the leaves have started to get slight speckling to them. Can you see that? I really hope that's picking up on camera, but they're getting light polka dots on them. And it's so, it's so bizarre. It's not all of the leaves. But it's some of them. It's really cool to see. So I'm excited to see what this plant does for me in the next coming months. But it's so cool. I love the fact that it's just a different shape than the regular begonias. Um, so yeah, this no ID begonia is definitely one of my top favorites as well. Next one is a newer one to my collection, which is why it is a pretty small one. I just finished propagating it and I potted it up not too long ago, but it is Begonia Linda Dawn. And this is a begonia I didn't know about. And I'm so glad it's in my hands now. So the backs are super red, first of all. Just look at that beautiful maroon color. And then the little dots on it, you know, like the cat, you know, like the cat's tongue, how they have dots. They're almost like a pinkish color. So it is, it's really awesome. Really, it's just a really beautiful plant. I love this and I cannot wait for it to grow and be beautiful. And it just, the texture is insane. A true stunner, Begonia Linda Dawn. Here we have Begonia Lana, I think it's called. I received this from Secret Plant Pals, which is a, a, a secret Santa thing that's hosted on Instagram. And the person that I had knew that I loved begonias and she sent me a cutting of this one and she wasn't sure 
what the name of it is. So essentially it is like a no ID, but in her research, this was the Begonia Lana was the like the closest ID she could get. And those leaves, those stripes down the middle are iridescent. So they're a shiny gray color, silver color. And you can see the new leaf coming in there at the top. And this begonia is such a fast grower. I just finished propagating this stem here at the bottom after cutting it off the top and it propagated super easy. And now it's even putting out a new leaf already, which is insane. I haven't seen this begonia going around much, but it is, it's really pretty, really hardy. And uh, yeah, I love it a lot. Here we have a beast of a begonia. And literally my most prolific and just fastest growing one. This is Begonia Maurice Amy. And literally this plant grows like a weed. Just, oh, can we just appreciate these leaves for a second? Another iridescent color. They have like purples and greens and pinks and veins. They're just, they're so pretty. So, I received this plant as cuttings. I think it might've been rooted, I don't remember, but from Dea, who we all know and love. Um, she gave me this plant and she gave me a few begonia cuttings actually because we share a mutual begonia love. And it's it. this has done the best. Like out of all the begonias she sent me, this, this one has, as you can see, it's just, it's taken off. I've even cut it and shared it with people. And I'm really excited to see where this plant goes. And now that I'm giving my begonias more light, I know the leaves are gonna get even bigger. So <laughs> we'll see where this goes. I might cut it back some more a little bit, at least one more time, just to make a fuller pot. So you see I have that little baby there at the bottom. But yeah, just such an easy plant. If you've been thinking about Maurice Amy, definitely get her because she is just so prolific and just so amazing. <laughs> Next is a begonia. I am kind of <laughs> sad to show just because um, that whole low light situation really did a number on this plant. Not in any bad ways, but we have begonia harmonies firecracker. So when I first purchased this plant, the leaves were huge and just so stunning and now as you can see the leaves are really just small and not really anything too special which makes me sad but it's okay i still really love this one i found it randomly on etsy um i think the etsy was southern oaks aquatics i'm pretty sure that's where i got it from but it's just, it's another really easy going begonia. I haven't had any troubles with it, but I really do need to work on getting the leaves bigger. And it's, I mean, i would try to find a picture of when I first got it, but the leaves were just so beautiful. So I'm definitely going to be working on that now. Here we go, Harmony's Firecracker. They have really cute little white leaves. It has flowered for me once before. That's another thing, begonia flowers. Um, my, I, I don't know, I feel like my begonias just flower just randomly. I haven't really focused much on the whole flowering process of them. I know my pink minks did flower and it did have, I think it was really cute pink leaves, I wanna say. I'll try to insert a picture of when it flowered. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really paid attention much to them, which. I am definitely going to change. I need to concentrate. I need to pay attention more to the flowers. Now this crazy begonia is another Steve's Leaves one and it is Begonia Coral Sea. So this is another one that just grows <laughs> like a weed. I have cut this one so many times, literally like three or four times. I haven't even had it for a year and it's just, it's insane how big it's gotten. Um, once again, another really easy begonia, even though I have it in terracotta, which I don't recommend unless you want to water them all the time. But yeah, it's so, it's just, it's a really cool one. I mean, to be honest, this one really isn't one of my favorites, but I have it. It's here, so I take care of it. I might gift this one or just give it away to somebody. 
Um, I don't know. I'm still on the fence, but yeah, here we have it. Begonia Coral Sea. Now the last two begonias I have to share are ones that I don't keep on my begonia shelf and they are two rhizomaceous type of begonias. And first we have Begonia Black Mamba, which just looks so amazing in this white pot, but ooh, look at that. Look at those backs. So this torn leaf here is just a leaf from shipping. The new leaves have been coming out pretty well. I don't even know if you can see that, but it has some new growth there. And then we have Begonia Pavanina, which as you can see, it kind of shines a bluish color, but when you look at it, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's a really cool Begonia and it has those beautiful, notorious red backs and you can even see some new babies there coming oh and you can even see some new babies there coming from the bottom so these two begonias i keep in my kitchen right by my sink right by my north facing window so they're getting like that perfect medium light that begonias love and this begonia this pavanina did not grow for me until i put it in that area and so i haven't tested the humidity but i'm assuming Obviously, it's in my kitchen by, you know, like things being cooked and I'm constantly washing dishes. So obviously the humidity is going to be at least a little bit higher in that area. And I just, they, they love it. These are both thriving. They're both the first types of rhizomaceous begonias I've been able to keep alive. So, and these, I also let dry out a good bit, probably around... 50 to 60 percent before i water them so if you're struggling and if you're like me and you struggle with these types of begonias maybe try that to give it slightly more humidity and don't let it dry out as much and i do feel like these just take a little bit longer to acclimate to your house than the cane begonias oh, and there you have it <laughs> I know my begonia collection isn't as big or even really as beautiful as other begonia collections, but I love it a lot. I still have a lot to learn about them and I do have a lot on my wish list uh, as far as terrarium begonias. I don't know if I'm ready to get into that world, but there are some really beautiful ones. So I'm pretty sure I'll end up there eventually. <laughs> but I would love to know if you are a begonia lover first and foremost, and if you're not a begonia lover and you made it this far, thank you so much. But I would love to know your favorite begonia in your collection and your number one wish list begonia. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all gave it a thumbs up and I hope you found my tips a little bit helpful. I know I struggled with begonias for a while, so if you're struggling with them currently, there is hope. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. I hope you all are staying safe, sane, and healthy, and I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful holiday. Bye.